So I'm Hannah Jardine, a teaching and learning specialist at the Center for Teaching, Research, and Learning. I'm Megan Lickie. I'm the Director of Sustainability for AU. All right. So we'd love to get to know um, who's here and what your experience is with teaching sustainability and a little bit more about what might have brought you here. So we're going to launch an introductory poll. You should now see. Uh, and yeah, so the first question, have you ever taught a class that includes sustainability? We included a maybe in there in case you're questioning whether um, what you taught was categorized under sustainability. And we'll talk more about that later. How confident are you in teaching about sustainability? And do you have a class in mind that you want to integrate sustainability into, whether that's this coming semester or in the future? So go ahead and end the poll. And now you all should be able to see the results. So this first question, have you ever taught a class that includes sustainability? It looks like we're mixed across the board, some yeses, a no, and a few maybes. So um, hopefully what we present today, we'll get that maybe into recognizing where it might be. You're gonna say something, Megan? Uh, I was agreeing that I, I think we might be able to help the people who said maybe um, kind of better define what they're gonna classify as sustainability today. And how confident are we? Also, again, a little bit of a mix. So not confident. And hopefully by the end of the session, you'll feel more confident, somewhat or very. And we'll lean on those who put very um, to share ideas throughout the session as to what um, you've done in your classes that has worked really well. Then lastly, do you have a class in mind? It looks like everyone is either a yes or a maybe. So we're glad you're here um, so that you can think about what class in particular uh, as we're talking about these options today. Uh, where you might want to integrate that. All right, so I will stop sharing the poll. Uh, so our session learning outcomes for today, what the questions we hope to address with you. So first, how is sustainability cross-disciplinary? Um, that word cross-disciplinary we chose to use in the title to think about not just how can we integrate sustainability into our courses, but how can that enhance cross-disciplinary learning um, in a variety of course contexts? So how can we um, create a more holistic learning experience for our students across disciplines. Uh, what resources are available to me? So Megan will talk a lot about all the resources available at AU and beyond and the resources we can connect you with to support you in integrating sustainability in a cross-disciplinary way. And what can you do in your course? So we'll have a lot of moments we'll be, um, be presenting you ideas and giving you a chance to reflect on ideas to think about what you might apply this semester or in a future semester. So sustainability as cross-disciplinary, what do we mean by that? Um, before we even get into what sustainability is or what sustainability in the curriculum might look like, um, we also wanted to present to you the why. So why might you want to include sustainability in the curriculum? Uh, education research shows that there's um, a huge benefit to including anything that is real world relevant and in terms of motivating student learning and increasing student engagement helping students feel empowered, especially if we're aiming to combat eco-anxiety. Um, Megan, do you want to speak a little bit more about that point? Yeah, um, we know that uh, people our students age feel a lot of eco-anxiety, just that this huge problem is looming in their future and they can often feel powerless against it. And so the more that we can bring solutions thinking into our discussions that includes some element of sustainability, the more we're going to empower them to feel like they have some agency over these huge problems and, and give them tools to exercise that agency. So if that's a new term for you, uh, something to be thinking about throughout the presentation. And then addressing sustainability in your course can lead to increased engagement and enthusiasm, dedication to the discipline, or in this case, when we're talking about cross-disciplinary, dedication across disciplinary, disciplines or recognizing even the value of interdisciplinary um, integration to solve some of these real world problems um, and also um, increased academic performance. I'll pass it over to Megan to talk more about our multidisciplinary approach to sustainability. Um, yeah, I'm just going to start with this sort of overview of some um, high level ways of thinking about sustainability. I think it's easy to think about the historical thinking where when we talked about sustainability problems, we were thinking recycling, energy efficiency, 
um, really things that are focused on environmental impacts, but the true definition of sustainability involves these three pillars and the environment, the society and economics. And you can think about it in a few different ways. Um, and I think using these frameworks can help as we're designing classes or activities within a class um, or selecting readings or whatever activities you might be bringing into the classroom, thinking about it through this framework can help bring in those multidisciplinary or cross-disciplinary lenses into the work that we're doing. And so um, this first visual tool shows it as concentric circles where an economy exists within a society and a society relies on a functioning environment in which to thrive. We can also look at it as this Venn diagram where we could look at an economic problem in isolation, we can look at societies in isolation, uh, environmental problems in isolation, or we can think about where they, those three things overlap being how we look at things in a sustainability world or lens. Um, so where those three overlap is where we're gonna find sustainability. Go to the next one. Thanks. Um, and hopefully this slide might help some of you who are considering if maybe you've taught a class that included sustainability before. Um, every few years, my office sends out a survey to all faculty who have taught a course in the last year and asks you all to identify if the class you taught was a sustainability class or a sustainability inclusive class. This Exercise is a part of STARS, which is the Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Reporting System. We report every few years through that, and those um, reports are used in ratings and rankings to evaluate how universities are doing in sustainability. Things like the Princeton Review use data from that to rate universities um, in terms of how we're doing with sustainability. Um, so these are the definitions that STARS provides. A sustainability course is going to be one that is pretty easily identifiable as something that is sustainability focused it's demonstrated in the title or a high level description. There's a few different ways this could manifest in a course, it could be a foundational course that's really explicitly focused on sustainability, it could be a course that's explicitly focused on something else. But with an application of sustainability you could think of green chemistry as an example of this and those kind of classes are really ones where it's easy to find that cross disciplinary element in it right we're talking about um, using an application in a different discipline. And then also uh, courses that are focused on a specific sustainability challenge and those are going to use systems thinking and again systems thinking is a really. Um, useful tool to bring in the cross disciplinary approach if we're thinking about a systems problem and we want to think about. Um, you know the issues with installing solar panels there's a social element where we actually know that the most. Um, the best indicator for if you're going to put solar panels on your house is if your neighbor has solar panels on their house so there's like a social element, you can bring in, you can look at the economics of it. Uh, and so it really requires that you view it through different lenses. When we think about a sustainability inclusive class that's going to be a class that's really primarily focused on something else but incorporates sustainability through a specific module or activities. Um, a, a solutions based focus or concepts based focus that kind of comes up throughout the course. An example of this that I like to use is a class that we have at AU um, where the goal of the course is to teach students to design apps for phones. And so the learning outcomes there are really how do I design a user friendly app that's going to get people in the app using the app solving what they need to solve with the app. But the assignment is to design an app that solves a sustainability problem that we have on campus, so you can see how sustainability is really woven into that, but it's not the primary focus or the learning objective. You can go to the next one. Oh, actually, I think i'm turning it back over to you to talk about. Um, some methods that you could use in your classes to start thinking about cross disciplinary approaches. Yeah, and I think um, I don't know if this is the best way to say this, but when as you were talking, Megan, I'm remembering we've we've introduced this before as the sustainability course being sustainability as the content and then a sustainability inclusive is more like sustainability as the context. Um, but I don't know yeah. if that's necessarily always the case to in the way to think about it, but um, I think that's a useful way to to think about it for sure. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, so, so this session being focused more specifically on opportunities for cross-disciplinary connections, I wanted to present to you a number of ways in which you might approach this, and then we will go into more detail about a few of these. Um, so we're thinking about things like case studies. So for example, in an accounting or statistics and data analysis class, you could learn skills through the context of a sustainability problem, or like the example Megan just gave about um, learning how to create a phone app using um, the, the context of sustainability to as the case to then apply that skill to. Um, field trips could be virtual or in person, a chance for students to place themselves into the issue, see or experience it, making it more real, um, group projects where students are working together to solve these problems, research papers or projects, um, even working together to collect data to answer a question related to sustainability. Um, anything related, any uh, terms of course materials. So that also is thinking about the sustainability inclusive courses. So thinking about what are the skills you're trying to teach and how can you bring sustainability into the course materials through which you're um, learning those skills. Guest speakers and community partners. So bringing in the community or connecting with the community and we'll talk about a number of ways in which that might happen. So um, for the next large segment of this workshop, we're going to focus on one of these topics and then give you a chance to collaborate and brainstorm with each other to think about what this might look like in your own course. So we're gonna start with guest speakers. Um, so we have a number of ideas here to get you thinking about what this might look like or how you might do this. Um, so anything where you're using outside experts to bring new perspectives to enhance that interdisciplinary concept or remember thinking about cross-disciplinary. So are there guest speakers that you might bring in that are outside of your direct field um, or your disciplinary background, but that can still uh, inform the learning that you're doing in your course? Um, so considering a lecture swap with another course, um, using a guest lecture in an assignment, you might even consider Things like pre-recorded lectures, so asking a colleague or even finding on the internet um, videos of lectures that are given by other people. Um, so the guest speaker doesn't even necessarily have to be live, but they could be pre-recorded. Um, interviews with experts online, TED Talks or podcasts. These are all examples of guest speakers, so to speak, that you could bring in um, and bring in also that multimedia aspect to your course. Uh, perusing the list of sustainability courses at AU. So Megan will, um, I think, share a link to that or can speak more to that in that there's a list of anybody who's answered the survey and considered their course to be a sustainability course. And you could reach out to a colleague to seek out someone who could bring a new angle to your material or, or offer the opportunity to do a lecture swap with each other. And certainly working with the sustainability office, Megan is also a great option as a guest speaker and others that she might be able to connect you with. Um, to talk more about sustainability on campus, especially. Uh, Megan, is there anything else you wanted to add here? Yeah, I would say that when you, you think about um, a lot of these elements, this is a good opportunity to just think outside the box of what a typical guest speaker might look like. Um, I think I just dropped the link into the chat that goes directly to the list of all the sustainability classes that we identified for last year. If you happen to think that you have a class that isn't on the list and you want us to add it, please just send me an email. We're happy to add classes. Um, but I think it's a, a great opportunity to look through that and see if there's an expert on campus who already has expertise in that element that you want to bring into your class. and see if they're available to come, or maybe they have a pre-recorded lecture that would be really applicable. Or you could, I think the swapping lectures idea um, has a lot of value in, um, in expanding what students are exposed to right here on our campus and, and showing the breadth of really what sustainability could be. Um, I think that that's an important thing that guest speakers especially bring into it. Um, it's such a growing and changing field that the more perspectives and the more examples of careers that students are exposed to, I think the, the more empowered they feel as they potentially pursue a career in it themselves to understand what directions they could go in. All right, so thinking about guest speakers, we're gonna lead into a collaborative brainstorm. So we'll put you into 
two um, groups of people to talk to each other. And since this is the first breakout room, we encourage you to introduce yourself, share about the course you teach that you might want to include these cross-disciplinary connections. And then for this time, um, thinking about and discussing what guest speakers might you be interested in bringing into your class? And are you interested in doing a guest speaker exchange with someone, um, maybe someone in your breakout room, but if not, um, who might you reach out to? Or you can even explore this list um, together in your rooms and discuss approaches to um, reaching out to people. So I will um, create those rooms and see you back in about, say, eight minutes. Like to share before we move on? Or any new questions that you have now? <laughs> well, I'll jump in. I don't know if I'll just raise my hand since I have my camera on. Um, it was nice um, to meet Kate Brewer and um, see Rebecca Comfort again in our groups, so if I can do a shout out, because <laughs> um, many of us were on each other's maybe threads or calls. Um, but it was, you know, again, just nice to have that time. And uh, what we were talking about was that many of the students we feel are, are sometimes ahead of um, how we how we posit sustainability you know, within the frame of the coursework. I think a lot of students come to AU um, often well aware of AU's own sustainability goals and, and that's a big draw for them. So I guess by incorporating it, you know, in ways into the classroom is validating, you know, why they're there. Hmm. Like in some cases they're expecting it to be very present and prevalent and addressed, yeah. All right, I can talk about the, the next um, sure. set of options <laughs> that we brought up. Um, so I'm gonna talk about community partnerships and field trips. And I think that it's a, a useful tool to think about this as sort of a continuum. You can, it's not, you know, either or, or uh, I think that you can incorporate it at a lot of different levels. I think at the high end um, of involvement is going to be creating a community based learning course and that's through our community engagement office, they have a whole program where you can apply before the start of the semester. To work with them they'll help you develop the pedagogy to have a meaningful relationship and a long term relationship that's going to be based in learning. Um, with some organization in our local community and they'll help facilitate it and guide you through this process. But a community based learning class is going to be one that really is focused on that community relationship throughout the entire course of the semester. At the other end of that continuum is really a, a field trip that you could do as a group during a course session or one that you assign as a, a homework assignment. These can be in person or virtual and i've just listed a few tools that I have found useful as I look for community partners that we can go and learn from. DOEE is the district's Department of Energy and the Environment, um, and they have an entire sustainability wing based on the district's sustainability plan. And the district's sustainability plan, if you've not had the opportunity to peruse it, is very um, progressive and it's very uh, comprehensive. And so it really does a good job of pulling in those three pillars of sustainability. You can find projects. Um, that they're working on focused on equity, focused on water, focused on um, energy use, buildings, really a whole host of different kinds of projects. And they approach them all thinking about how they affect the community, how they're going to affect the economy in DC, and how they're going to affect the global environment. And um, on their website, they have a list of all the different kinds of projects they're working on and with contact information. And I've always had really great luck in getting responses. If you ever need a contact there, I'm also happy to help you with that. But there are a lot of projects that they're working on that can apply to, I mean, I, I can't think of a class that they might not apply to in some way. There are also building tours as an option. Um, well is a healthy building standard and LEED, if you're not familiar, is a green building standard that we use in the district um, and globally. But the district has the highest number of lead buildings 
um, compared to any state. <laughs> so um, there are a lot of opportunities here to learn about LEAD or well buildings and LEAD projects um, focus on, again, all the pillars of sustainability. They look at like transportation options and so, and community development around there. And so there's a lot of different lenses that you could use if you're visiting one of those types of projects to think about what it's up to and how it's impacting um, a whole host of things in a, in a community. The Anacostia Watershed Society is another one that we've partnered with in the past. Um, you can go on tours of the Anacostia with them where you're going to learn about environmental problems in the river itself, but also the history of that community, um, how we're going about solving the problems in the river, why we're going about solving them, how we want to include the community in that, um, and some of the economic drivers like the plastic bag stacks that we have that have helped um, to facilitate those projects and to change the way we're interacting with the, the community there and the water there. Um, and so the district just has a lot of sustainability focused projects that are happening where they're really considering a lot of different lenses as they're solving these problems. Um, you know, in, in good systems thinking approaches, they really want to make sure they're not creating a new problem as they're solving this problem. So um, in the examples that I have witnessed and been a part of, they really do work on looking at it through all the lenses and it just creates this really great case study, real world case study that you can see with your own eyes for our students to see how people are addressing sustainability challenges here. Um, another thing that I would really encourage is tapping into young alumni who are working in the local community, bring them in to talk about their experiences. Um, and I say young because I think sometimes when we think about alumni, we think about people who are 20, 30, 40 years into a really successful career and can bring this depth of, of knowledge. But I think for our students, it's sometimes really helpful to see what students are doing right out of college and to take some of that potential career anxiety off their backs. Like there are, there are jobs that are right here that can utilize the knowledge you've gained and um, and here's the type of work that your peers from just a couple of years ago here are now working on in your backyard. Um, I think it provides a really great opportunity to address a few things like learning more about the district, pulling in a new lens to the class, and then also I just feel like in sustainability there's so many career opportunities that students aren't aware of because the job searches aren't always really simple. You can't just type in sustainability and find all of the jobs. So it's just helpful to be exposed um, to as many different things as possible. So you can kind of expand that word search as you uh, as you start to to do your job searches in your senior senior year. Um, yeah. So as I like reflected on this element, I really do think it's useful to think about it as a continuum. You can incorporate this with just a virtual green buildings tour. Um, we have those available through our website and our relationship with US Green Building Council, or it could be a huge semester long involved process. There's no right way or wrong way to go about it. Um, Hannah, did you have anything you wanted to add to this? Great. Um, I think instead of breakout rooms, we could just stay together and chat about this one. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so we want people to think about um, what community partners or maybe what types of community partners in, in your dream version of a cl class would you want to work with and in what capacity would it be a full semester long relationship or would it be more of a case study that you want to pull in for a, a single assignment. Um, do you see possibilities for field trips in your class, either as a group or as individuals to kind of get off campus and see what's happening right here. I'll turn it over to you guys now. <laughs> what are people thinking about? Um, I know a lot of you said that you already have a class that you're thinking about adding sustainability to. Um, so it, it's probably really helpful to think about what might make sense for that particular course. So I'll jump in. If, is that the best way to do this by raising my hand? 
yeah, I think that works. <laughs> um, well, I, I think one of the one I just want to preface that one of the reasons I signed up for this workshop is that I'm a I'm going into my second year of my uh, my term faculty position, and I didn't know I was flying solo really for much of um, last semester um, because I really didn't know what resources were available to me. I didn't really seek that out. I was kind of busy in my own realm, and the course that I was teaching, sustainable seafood, had the word sustainable sustainable in it, and so. That's why I signed up for this course to to find out what other resources are available and you know share what I've done um, also. So in terms of what I, community partners I would like to work with this coming semester, I'm teaching a complex problems um, wasted food course, also marine ecosystems, um, and so they are <clears throat> sustainably inclusive courses, although they might not have it you know directly in the title. But I would like to work, for example, with um, the food pantry um, in terms of, and also the zero waste facilities. And then also um, with your office, Megan, um, the Office of Sustainability, um, encouraging the tours that are available on campus, also the access to the guest speaker, uh, such as yourself. So, you know, again, I feel like sometimes students know more about AU sustainability goals than, than I knew what was available on campus. And that's just because I was busy in my own world. So that's what I would draw um, from in terms of community partners and field trips. Again, I took uh, the sustainable seafood class, um, and this was just my experience, down to the wharf in Washington, um, in DC, um, to talk with some of the vendors down there. Um, and that was an upper undergraduate, lower graduate course. So it worked in terms of, you know, everyone meeting down there and, and so forth. However, I would probably stay closer to home this term and do um, tours on campus. Um, so that's what I would do. I love that you brought up some things that we have right on campus. Um, we have used AU as an example in classes in the past for sustainable cities classes, where you can really think about a university as a mini version of a city. We do a lot of things on campus that the district is doing on a much larger scale. Um, and so there are definitely opportunities without having to get on Metro where you might be able to see what what um, what's available in the broader world of sustainability without even leaving our campus. Um, I just want to share something with Christine. Yeah, please. So I, I just, I met this chef. He won the James Beard Award this year as like the best. He live, he have a um, restaurant called Oyster Oyster. And it's like meatless restaurant. And he also looking at the oyster, like mushroom to oyster shell. You know, by shell is like they clean the ocean. So it might be really great to just introduce this this um meatless chef win the best like food restaurant chef award in the nation. He live in DC, and then thinking about more not only food delicious food but eco eco ecology of food food industry as well. Well, that is, I welcome that introduction or any more information. Um, yeah. So I would be happy to connect with you while, either at the end of this call or, or however. Yeah, I DM, DM you my email. Great. Thank you. And can you tell me how you pronounce your name? Uh, Naoko, like present Naoko. company, Naoko. Naoko. Okay. Thank you, Naoko. My pleasure. That's great. Do others have maybe examples of um, working with community partners or field trips that have worked well for them in a class that they've taught in the past? Um, I can go, sorry. Oh, please. <laughs> I teach um, for the core, core foundation course for collaboration. Collaboration is complex. And then student learn how to collaborate through art making. Then I couldn't 
say this is a sustainable course, but I invited a lot of like、um, artists to use plants, natural material. Uh, in their art material, and invited this Baltimore BIPOC female a natural dye craft、um, group. And they introduced, like, you know, we did natural dye with whole class, but we did a collaboration and we t a l k about, you know, natural dye, you cannot control how, like painting. You have to learn, like, kind of open up your control. And there is a hint for sustainability. Like things are unsustainable be because humans are obsessed with controlling. So that was very successful, I say. That's great. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, I love the mention of art and thinking about、um, where art fits into the cross disciplinary connections, too. And... Utilizing art、um, to better understand sustainability and what that means for us. I would like to add to that. That's thanks for bringing that up、um, because I brought in a, a plastics artist that takes,、um, that basically creates art out of plastic bottles.、Um, and, and, and that artist did a workshop with the students. Um, aside from a presentation, and they, they all made、um, glasses、um, that they could take home. And, and the students really enjoyed that, that work, that artistic and creative part of that. I think there's so many interesting elements you can bring in by incorporating.、Um, Visual art or poetry or music, music、um, in terms of how we can reach people about some of these challenges. And I think that cross disciplinary element has so many benefits to exposure to how different people think about these problems in such vastly different ways and are looking at very different elements of them. Also, note Rebecca added into the chat、um, just an example of a complex problems class that hosted a co curricular park cleanup.、Um, and so it could, be, it could be a number of parks or other volunteering type opportunities where students get to get out and be active with their colleagues and peers while also giving back to the community and also learning while doing that.、Um, so that's great that they were able to include that. Do you know what course that was, Rebecca, and what the focus of the course was? How they connected that to the learning outcomes? Yeah, so I just checked、um, to see what they had written up about it. And it was actually a course on、um, how we define value. And so part of the question that they were exploring in the park cleanup was what's the value of doing a like, community based activity or volunteering to, to do something to improve your community? Um, so that's how they you know, connected it back to the course.、Um, but I love that they chose a sustainability aspect to, to make that happen.、Hmm. Thank you. A lot of philosophical questions that can be explored through sustainability. That's very true. Any last thoughts on、um, community partners? And we can jump to the next. All right.、Um, another way to do this、um, without having to take on a whole second、uh, field of expertise yourself is through course assignments and asking your students to、um, embrace looking at a problem through new lenses in, in their research. And you could do this in a couple of different ways having a single student work on a project that's looking at it through different lenses. You could do group projects where different students are using. Um, different frameworks to view the same problem and kind of work together on a solution. I really encourage adding a focus on solutions、um, in these cross disciplinary projects just to help with that element of eco anxiety. The,、um, 
like it's great for students to learn the in-depth causes of these really huge problems, but it's so helpful to, um, I guess, our long-term success in solving them and also to our students' um, mental health to understand what we can do about them, what is being done about them, what are the things we need to think about while we're solving these problems. And I think adding a, a cultural lens um, and it could be through an art project or music or poetry um, or thinking about the culture of the community that lives there. It can all depend on the type of project. Um, but I think adding that cultural lens helps students to really hone in on um, how we need to work with communities within them um, to, to solve the problem in the most appropriate way. I used to do an example um, with classes that I taught about biking to work and how um, like I would ask them all to just list all of the reasons that biking to work is a good thing to do. And students would you know, tell me that it's good for my health, it's better for the planet, I won't get stuck in traffic, so I won't get stressed out. Like this huge list of reasons why biking to work is better is better, right? <laughs> all the positives of it. And then I would be like, I agree with everything you just said. So why have I only biked to work two times this semester? Like what, what are the challenges? And then they would start thinking about that side of it. Like, um, like you might think it's more dangerous or the weather or where are you going to shower? Do you have changing facilities? And like thinking about all of the barriers and, um, and it was such a helpful exercise because a lot of the students who are learning about sustainability or environmental problems in general are motivated by things that are different than what's going to motivate the general population. And so starting to think about that cultural element um, gives a deeper appreciation to the different ways people view these problems and the solutions and how we, we all are going to identify different barriers um, that we might be encountering. Um, as, as we think about solutions. So I wanted to provide an example of a, a course assignment that I used in a class I taught a few years ago that incorporated um, a cross-disciplinary element. Um, I was teaching the environmental studies and science capstone and a colleague was teaching a psychology class that was looking at behavior change. And um, we were, I was including sort of an element of thinking about behavior change as we think about sustainability problems. And that class was using sustainability as the framework to teach about behavior change and the psychology behind it. So we were both kind of covering the same material and by pure coincidence, our classes happened to meet at the exact same time. Um, and so we decided to have two of our classes, our, of our sessions meet together. And so in the first one, we did a joint lecture um, where we talked about the sustainability problems we wanted our students to consider and also some of the behavioral science that we needed them to think about when they were designing a potential solution. And then we assigned group projects that included students from each of the classes. And it provided an opportunity for our students to recognize and appreciate this different type of expertise that the other group was bringing that was really critical to solving this problem and to coming up with a really thorough solution. Um, and so I think it showcased for them the breadth of the things that need to be considered in sustainability and the importance of collaboration and pulling from somebody else's expertise. Like we're just never going to be able to know all of it on our own. And, um, and in the end, I think we all felt it was really valuable um, and a, a really exciting project. Um, grading it was certainly a little bit challenging and I might make some tweaks to that if I did it again, um, but it was a unique opportunity to be able to overlap these two courses in a really meaningful way where students takeaways were not just about uh, the material that they were focused on, but also the material that the other students were learning about um, and to pull that into a, a real world um, project where they were trying to solve a sustainability problem that we have on campus and how would we address behavior like encouraging behavioral changes to address the problem yeah um so we can go to the next one the next slide so for this i'm curious um 
what assignments you think you might be able to use in a class you already teach that would pull in a cross-disciplinary perspective, something that um, you hadn't included if you've taught the class in the past. Um, and if there is another course or type of course that you think, um, or even just a, a different professor who you might be able to pull in to help provide that added expertise in, um, in bringing in a framework that you weren't already using. Are we gonna share again? Yeah, yeah. I have a um, fun assignment, but it failed greatly. Was um, <laughs> my video art course? I teach video digital photography and the video art, and I wanted to do some sustainability assignment in video art course. So I collaborated with. Um, I forgot the name of the class, sustainable study class, and then make a student group collaboration about AU sustainable practice. And then they have to make like one to three minutes short video how AU applying uh, sustainability in any, any area of AU. Then what's fun, but the timing of like working with two different class collaboration was really hard and then a lot of students end up make, making fun video but there's a lot of drama so it was not a sustainable structure i can appreciate that if you still have the videos i would love to see them now <laughs> oh yeah 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 <laughs> um yeah i mean the logistical challenges of it i feel like um I feel like to do it successfully, you have to do it a couple of times to iron out like, okay, how can we overcome the drama, I think is the appropriate word. <laughs> and I think that there's also an opportunity there to let our students know, um, and I, I don't think I did this successfully. I think in retrospect, I, I see the value in it that, um, you know, there was a learning element for the professors as well. Like we were figuring out how to make this course content work for them um and and i think there was some anxiety in the students about how the grading was going to work and i think it might have been helpful to let them know that there would be some flexibility in grading as we're all learning and i wasn't gonna um you know penalize them for just logistical challenges <laughs> and drama um that might be unfolding yeah grading is always a big obstacle for collaborative work yeah yeah Other assignments? Oh, go ahead. Um, I'm, uh, I'm not teaching now, but I'm thinking prospectively if, if I might teach an economics course of trying to in incorporate stuff. And when we, you're talking about organizations you could work with, I was imagining uh, a kind of policy oriented organization, either grassroots or, you know, think tank or something, and picking a policy area, something like something around food or housing or energy, and, and kind of looking into that. And you could, I could imagine doing that similarly in a classroom context in a way as you kind of described megan so finding someone's another class whether it's sociology or something kind of health oriented or something like that or or um uh you know kind of planning kind of thing or geography and and yeah sharing an assignment as a kind of discrete assignment to look into a policy area like that and in terms of the danger of it all flying out of control like one thing i just thought was that if you have you, you might just try and have a quite clearly delineated reading list like just a few articles from each perspective and then essentially you'd be asking the students to kind of synthesize that as well as being as creative as they want um so yeah that's the thinking i have here i like that um it also makes me think of um so au is a signatory to a number of climate commitments and one of them is america is all in it was originally called we are still in um and President Burwell sits on the board of it. Um, and it's the first time in my experience that cross sector collaboration has happened and it's focused on policy for the most part. Um, and it's really, it includes Fortune 500 companies, small businesses, faith communities, universities, um, non federal governmental actors. Um, 
I'm sure I'm missing some in this list, but it, it truly is as, as cross sector as you could imagine. And the goal of it is for us to come together to encourage policy adaptation at the federal level to help facilitate climate action. Um, and it's run by World Wildlife Fund. Um, and so I think that that would also be a, a great resource to tap into. They're right here and can talk about uh, the work that they've done to wrangle so many different types of organizations and and use that to catalyze some some movement in the policy arena on the federal stage. Is that you saying WWF themselves? They're, they're, are they, they're based here, are they? Uh, they're based in DC and yeah. then they, um, they're the, I'm going to say organizers, but I'm sure that's not quite the right word, um, but they kind of keep us all moving forward <laughs> as a group. They're the ones who schedule all of our meetings and and organize us. <laughs> Others who have assignments that maybe have been successful that you would either tweak or um, definitely redo that you might suggest to others. I do think a lot of the times when we think about cross, like adding a cross disciplinary element to our courses, it can be a little overwhelming, like bringing in this thing that we're not experts in. Um, it, is intimidating in some ways. And I think assignments is a nice way to start it. Um, it can be, um, again, like as much or as little of a part of the assignment as you want. I think um, it provides a lot of opportunities for students to also dive into their particular passions by pulling in some element that you might not have thought of as being relevant before. Um, I think that's a really cool thing about teaching sustainability too, is just the the numerous lenses through which every individual is going to look at it and the passions that we all bring are, are really different. Um, I usually start my classes. Um, Hannah had a session this morning about uh, engaging people at the beginning of the year and thinking about equity in the classroom. And one of the questions was on icebreakers. <laughs> um, and I always ask my students to tell me why they study sustainability, like what made them passionate in it. Um, because it is an area where you're doing it because you care in some way. Um, I have yet to find somebody who said that they have really decided to study sustainability because they hear there's a lot of money in it. Um, and so it's really, I think, an engaging way to tap into like, why am I here? Especially if they've been at university for a few years and um, have maybe gotten lost in the day to day of it. It's nice to give them that opportunity to kind of refocus it on. Oh, right. <laughs> like, this is why I do this. And even for me, I've been working in sustainability for more than 15 years. And, um, and it's nice for me to tap into like, what was it as a kid that made me really think about the environment as something I wanted to spend my life in? And how do I overcome eco anxiety, right? Like, I think that's something that we can all share with our students too. Are we successfully overcoming it or <laughs> how are we at least managing it within ourselves? And should I jump to sharing resources? So you can talk um, about all the. Yeah, let's jump to sharing resources and then we can do the final reflection, I think. Yeah. Um, so this is um, not a comprehensive list. If there's something that you wish we had um, that you're not seeing on this list, don't assume we don't have it. Um, please ask. And even if it's something that we don't have yet, we're actually working on, I can think of two off the top of my head, new websites that we're putting together because of requests from our community who wanted specific information and things available to them. So please do ask. So first, my office does offer sustainability tours of campus. We are more than willing to tailor those as well. Um, we've had classes in the past focused on pollution, and so we've really focused on like how are we dealing with point source pollution on our campus. 
um, and also ones that are focused more on um, water. And so we, we talk a lot about our, our water conservation strategy. So we're really happy to tailor the tours in whatever direction makes sense for your class um, and happy to brainstorm that. And then I also give guest lectures all the time. Sometimes that's about a very specific sustainability topic. It can be about what we're doing on campus. Um, again, I'm always happy to brainstorm what might be most effective for your class and see if I have the expertise to give you uh, <laughs> what element you're looking for in your in your course. Um, we do have the sustainability courses list that I already shared in the chat. We also have a research list available. Um, after I'm done talking, I'll drop a few more links in the chat, but um, the research list just lists um, all the faculty on campus who have research related to sustainability. And again, if you see that somebody is missing, please do let me know so we can update the list. Um, we also can offer resources from the US Green Building Council and from the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. AU is a member of both organizations, so to tap into their resources, you do have to create an account and link it to AU. Um, but once you're in there, AGE has a whole bunch of resources does, from faculty at other universities who are teaching sustainability and have put together case studies and have put it on the AGE website. If you have something, you can always put it together and put it on the AGE website as well. Um, for USGBC, we are a university member, so our entire community, this includes students, have access to their educational portal, which includes um, green buildings tours and really anything specific to any element of green building community, um, elements of it, lighting, water conservation. If you can think of it related to a building, there are courses or like hour long courses in that um, portal that are available to our community. Um, we also have case studies on the website for all of our green buildings on campus. So every lead project we have a case study for. Uh, we have a lot of data available. <laughs> some of it's easily accessible on the website. Some of it you have to message me and I'll, I can pull it and send it to you in an Excel file. Um, we have all of our greenhouse gas emissions data that goes back for years. Um, we have STARS, which uh, is the Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Reporting System. Um, that's what I mentioned that we gather all of that information on faculty courses and research for, but it is a very comprehensive sustainability report. It takes us months to put it together every few years to gather all the data from around campus related to energy use, water consumption. It also looks at the social elements of sustainability, so it includes um, pay equity on campus, our you know, our power people represented are their unions are their you know staff councils that type of thing. Um, it looks at diversity equity and inclusion elements on our campus it's truly comprehensive and they, we've been doing it for. Well over 16 years now, so there's also a lot of historical data available through stars, um, we do have energy data and that is available per building. I think I can get the increment down to every 15 minutes how that building is using electricity um, or natural gas. I can also look at water consumption in, I don't know if we have that in every building, but in a lot of buildings on campus. And again, down to 15 minute increments. So it's real time data that I can pull um, that depending on what you're teaching might be really useful. And it's always kind of interesting to see, um, you know, well, what is that building doing during the course of the day? When does energy peak? When does it drop and why? Um, and then we have an environmental justice toolkit that dives into a lot of resources that are available um, to bring in that social element of sustainability. Um, one of the things that my office strives to do is not talk about environmental problems in isolation. So if we're going to talk about recycling, we also really want to talk about um, the communities that tend to be impacted by landfills and in the United States um your race is the biggest determinant of if you live near a landfill or not and black people in the united states are more likely to live near them than any other population regardless of income and so i think it's important to have those resources available too so that we can make sure we're talking about the full picture of environmental issues and not just kind of zeroing in on on one area um are there things that i didn't mention that you were really hoping that we were going to have available as I drop a couple of links in the chat for you. This first one is the um, faculty website on our, um, the faculty site on our website. 
And this has um, information about how to sign up for a sustainability tour, the green teaching program through CTRL. Um, CC has a listserv for faculty who want to connect about teaching about sustainability and you can sign up for the CC listserv there. Um, we also have a sustainability lesson plan that CTRL Help does create that's available on that website as well um, for faculty to tap into and then links are available from that website to just about everything else that I have mentioned.